Thank you so much. A good evening to everyone. I'm so much excited to be here speaking to you about uh, developing soft skills for a successful uh, open source career. I'm Sumaya Nalukwago. I'm a tech content creator on YouTube, take over with Sumaya, and I'm a community lead. I volunteer with the Google Developer Groups in Uganda, Women Tech Makers. I'm a community organizer, and I work with the Innovation Village as a trainer. So, So should I repeat? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, everyone. No, no, okay. okay. So I'm going to be taking you through how you can use soft skills, how you can develop soft skills so that you can have a successful open source career. Okay, soft skills are those skills that you can transfer from one profession to another. You can be a software developer and you transition into a different profession. Let's say you've been working in a, a manufacturing industry and now you're working in a hospital. You can take those skills with you. You don't require, you don't have to learn them again as long as you've learned them and they don't only work in one profession. So they are really vital for each and every developer. If you're contributing to open source or not, you really need these skills. So, okay. so we are going to look at the power of soft skills in open source and we are going to look at how you can actually craft and uh, make good communication in your, soft, in your open source career. We are going to look at how you can build trust and work on team on work together in open source, you collaborate with different people, we're going to see how you can leverage your network for growth and visibility as an open source contributor, and we're going to look at how you can actually build a rewarding open source career. So what is the power of soft skills? Why are we talking about soft skills? You, you cannot be a successful open source contributor when you don't know soft skills or when you don't actually have them. So if you want to be good in open source contribution, you have to really learn the soft skills. And these soft skills are not just collaboration, there is communication, there is time management, uh, there is, um, there are very many, but you have to learn them and learn how you can actually incorporate them in your day-to-day -to -day life. So one thing I want to tell you is, Open source is not all about coding. You need these skills so that you can have a successful open source career. You need to learn how you can collaborate with people, work in teams, how you can communicate, not only verbally, but also written communication. How are you speaking to your, to your team members? How are you responding to whatever they are sending you? Uh, are you keeping time or you're the person that is making the team lag behind because you don't deliver work on time? So these are the soft skills that we actually need to work on. Uh, one thing you have to know is that soft skills are like the, the bridge that, that combine your technical skills and what you have to offer. If you're a good software developer, you know different frameworks, you know different languages, but if you don't know how to communicate what you're actually working on, then it will be as good as nothing, right? So you need to learn how you can actually communicate so that you can talk to a client about the project that you're working on. You need to learn how you can um, Manage time. Let's say you're going to present to a client. How are you going to? Uh, d will you go there late, or you, you're supposed to go there early? So those are some of the things that you have to work on. Uh, effective communication is one of the vital soft skills that we have to work on because it gives us a clear understanding of the projects that you're working on and the person that you're actually working on the project for. Then collaboration is also one of the soft skills because it builds trust. Not only trust, but if you know that you're working in a team, then it will make work easy because you will divide a task uh, between very many people and work will easily get done. Then collaboration also resolves conflicts and uh, it leverages on diverse perspectives. So now in collaboration, uh, you, you get to work with people from different backgrounds. If I'm a product designer, I'm going to work with a product manager, a software developer, uh, uh, someone doing QA, and trust me, I'm going to be working with a range of people and it will boost creativity among the team members. So building a network increases visibility and opens 
those two new opportunities. If, you, if you're good at soft skills, if you've mastered your soft skills, you'll be able to build a network. And by building a network, you'll gain more visibility. Trust me, it's easy for you to shine and become successful when you're working as a team. But if you're working as a loan, it will definitely be hard for you to, to shine. So here is how you can um, craft clear communication for seamless collaboration. Yes, we are working on different projects. How can we uh, make sure that the people we are writing for clearly understand what we are trying to document? So first, make sure that your, your documentation for any project is very clear and understandable. Uh, you can choose to have it in different languages so that you cater for all types of people. If it's, um, if it's like... Um, if it's like something about a, a certain project that you're working on, try as much as you can to make sure maybe there is a voice recording for the documentation and there is also the written so that you can cater for someone who might not read but they can actually listen. Then structure information logically with clear headings so that people can easily identify the headings and the rest of the body part in the documentation. Use code examples because uh, using examples generally makes it easy for someone to understand. But if you don't include examples, it will definitely be hard to understand the documentation. And if visuals are necessary, try as much as you can to include them because visuals are kind of appealing to whoever is always trying to read. Then uh, try as much as you can to create informative presentations. Uh, then focus on the key takeaways. If you're documenting a project, focus on the vital things that you want someone to, to take note of. Um, you can as well use visuals again to complement your messages and um, always practice your delivery for clarity and conciseness. Then try as much as you can to have well-structured code comments. I know comments sometimes can be long, but try as much as you can to have them well-structured and explain the purpose of the project that you're working on. If I visited your GitHub and I maybe I don't have a lot of time or I don't have experience, I should be able to understand whatever you're working on in, through your documentation. I should be able to read and easily understand the reason as to why you're working on that project, its impact, and how it will benefit the community. Then use a clear and concise language because uh, we are a global community, so it should be easy for someone to easily understand and read what, you're, what you've documented without them going to use a translator. Then. Um, Follow project specific commenting guidelines. I know different projects have different guidelines, so try as much as you can to follow them. So here is how we can build trust among our team members, among the contributors in the community, and uh, how we can actually build effective collaboration in diverse teams. So first is you need a welcoming community, an inclusive environment. If I start working on a project with you, an open source project, how are you going to welcome me to your team? It, you welcoming me very well will make me feel at home and will actually force me to contribute the more. It will, it will force me to do more because you've welcomed me well. So let's try as much as we can to have an inclusive environment where we include everyone irrespective of their technical expertise, irrespective of their backgrounds, irrespective of their skill set. So uh, we also need to actively listen to the perspectives of different people. We need to know that not only your ideas matter, the ideas of other community members also matter. So if you're working on a project with someone, try as much as you can to get their views. You need to listen from everyone, then you can make a decision. You can't make a decision from your own views alone. Then uh, offer constructive feedback. Yeah, if you're working on a team, and maybe someone has done something, give them good feedback. It might be positive, it might be negative, but it should be constructive. It should be able to help them do better, not belittling them. And uh, make sure as you're working on a team, be open to feedback. You only grow with feedback. Uh, uh, try as much as you can to resolve conflict. If you can, avoid conflicts because conflicts are not good. But if they come up, then try as much as you can to, to resolve them so that you can have a successful open source career. And we have to celebrate success. Always celebrate the small and big achievements and acknowledge all your contributions. If, if a member has contributed, even if it's one line of code, acknowledge them, thank them for that, tell them that they did well. It's through these small, small achievements that we can actually get better. 
So here is how you can actually leverage your network to grow and uh, be out there. Because we are working on a team, we are open source contributors, you definitely need to go out there in the world and develop your network. So first is you have to participate in Apache community events like this one. Now by you being on such an event, it means you're already a step ahead. Then engage in online forums. Yeah, we have different Slack channels. We have different communities. Don't just be there. Engage in conversations. Contribute where you can. Uh, ask for clarity when you've not understood something. And you can also offer your expertise. Then seek mentorship from experienced contributors. If you're a beginner, you've not contributed, you're trying to learn how you can contribute, you can reach out to a mentor, get someone to guide you, and you start contributing to open source. Then create informative contents. You can start writing blogs. I personally create videos on YouTube. Uh, you can do tutorials or you can even do code samples and share them with the world so that other people can get to learn from what you've learned. And uh, you can as well as share your knowledge and contribute to the community. There are very many ways of contributing to the community. It can be through volunteering. It can be through speaking at events. It can be through anything. So. Here is how you can build a rewarding open source career. First, you have to develop the soft skills that we talked about, the time management, the communication, all those soft skills, you need them alongside your technical expertise. Then you need to uh, speak effectively, communicate effectively, and collaborate. Open source is majorly around collaboration. You cannot be a good open source contributor when you're not collaborating then you have to build a strong network because it's, your network is your net worth. You can only grow because of the people you surround yourself with. So if you want to be successful in open source, build a strong network, have good people around you. And then lastly, get involved. Always get involved in community events. Contribute every other single day. It might be a small contribution, but it will definitely take you far and build your reputation. Your reputation is who you are. Your reputation is what speaks when you're not there. So make sure you have a good reputation. Thank you so much. I will take in any questions. Uh, continue. Presentation for the next topic by Sumaya. You may go ahead. Just to, uh, do you have any questions you want to raise? So you're going to continue for this one, right? Okay. Okay. You, you may want to take a short break if you want to. Okay.